Hi folks, and welcome back to the very cold allotment. It's a gorgeous day today, really lovely blue skies, but oh my goodness, the chill. The chill is here. It's arrived and it's proper. We've not had any frosts overnight, but today it's about five degrees. It's kind of, it's uh, Friday afternoon. And even in the tunnel, it's pretty chilly. So I'm glad I'm layered up. But what are we doing today? Well, I don't really know. We're gonna try and do a bit of bodging. Do a bit of bodging with the guttering. Look, I've got that and got some glue. So hopefully that's gonna go well. But first, I've been busy this week. I've been coming up in the evenings after work where there's just a little bit of light, not really enough to make any videos, but I have been busy. So there's a few things to show you. The first, <gasps> the slabs are done. They're done. They're fully done. So one more step to the, towards the, the polytunnel being completely finished. The peppers, I think, I think really it's time for their final harvest, to be honest. A lot of them, just didn't come to fruition this year, unfortunately. I was just looking at a few of these and I'm starting to see signs of the kind of dieback from the cold. This side actually looks pretty good, apart from this pepper here. This one is the Dorset Naga. And there are quite a lot of aphids now, a lot of this surface level mold on the leaves that you get towards the end of the season when they're really unhappy. It's such a shame the Dorset Naga and this one, the Butcher Lokia, just, you know, a good few months late. This is starting to look like a really nice plant but it's too late. Here are the signs of the dieback, and I think that's probably the cold. Not ideal, but we do still have lots and lots of peppers to harvest, and these are kind of the spares, you know? The actual chili pepper greenhouse is looking really nice. You can see the tunnel is starting to look a lot more like a working space. There's just stuff absolutely everywhere. My good neighbour Mike is just giving me some more brassicas because the ones that I showed recently that were ravaged, I potted them on but are they gonna survive? I don't know, we'll find out. I've, I've given them another little chance. You know, they're in some nice compost. Got some of the radicchio and the leeks that I was showing you. And really sad to show you this. Ah, oh, the side shoot, the tomato side shoot experiment. Actually not looking very good. Quite a lot of dieback in here. These probably need to come home with me next time I bring up the car, but look, this doesn't look good. This kind of spotting on the leaves, quite a few have just died back completely and I've got a little bit of concern that this is actually blight that's come in to this lot from the, the greenhouse so that's not ideal but lots going on and I've got seeds for all of those so if they don't pull through it's not the end of the world and you just need one or two to make it through and then you can take all the side shoots and you're self-sufficient for the rest of the season. It's not just inside the polytunnel it's outside too so we've got the slabs down now outside I'm going to continue to work to create a little patio area here. You might wonder why is there a load of wood chip between the two levels of slabs? Well, there's a big height difference here and I thought instead of putting in a big step, I'll just chuck down some wood chip. And this is mainly just so I can get a wheelbarrow up and down here and it looks a bit nicer than the white membrane that I've got. I had to get a bit, <laughs> went a bit janky there where I've got the little the spike in. But all around the side now we've got the membrane down and the wood chip just to stop weeds and always been a bit worried about weed growth right along the side of the plastic but got the whole side of the tunnel done now so this is quite a few barrow loads of wood chip got a really thick load on here just to mulch down and prevent the weeds for the the season this is going to be a bit more of a growing area i've got some celeriac in there for now and look at this down here something sat on my parsnips i don't know if this is a cat or a fox but something's been having a little red oh look at these all the little mushies. I'm planning on just leaving this until we've had the first frost proper to get some of these parsnips going. Oh, they don't look bad though. We do have one other little bit there. This is just some wood chip because there's a, <laughs> it's been a massive like a step here since I took the allotment on. I don't know why, but I used to fall in it quite a bit. So I've just started filling that up with wood chip. And I found a place for the hot composter. So this is kind of a bit of kind of dead space really. We've got a little habitat area here. I see loads of lizards and slow worms and I like to keep this a little bit wild. And I think this just kind of makes sense as a little area for the hot composter. It's quite central to both the plot, a nice middle location for traveling. Got it lined on the bottom. And I think that's about it. What I really need to work on now. Oh God, those, yeah, those tomatoes are definitely, definitely done. 
It is horrible weather today, folks. It's both freezing cold and blowing. You know, it's absolutely cutting wind. And, ah, oh, that's not good. I've just noticed. Look at that. <laughs> it is not warm enough for an auto vent to be open. So I guess I'll add that to today's list of jobs, taking those out. You're kind of meant to do that in this kind of stormy weather anyway but around this time of year, they do get a little bit unreliable and I'm guessing that's just been stuck open. Thankfully, I came in here earlier. I didn't actually notice that, but... One of the first things I do, I check the tunnel and I check these. I check these babies and everything looks quite well in here for the peppers. So I've just been having a little play around with these guttering thingies. Um, they're the wrong size and what would be sensible is probably measuring up and buying the correct one, but I've got them. I figure I might as well use them. I had a great comment from Glasbeck DIY. Always leaves me really good comments, really practical solutions and advice. <laughs> I wouldn't be very, very far without my comments <laughs> from people actually giving me good advice, but he did mention a website, Greenhouse Spares, which I've never used, but they do stock all sorts of useful stuff. So if you've got an allotment, and a greenhouse, or they sell all sorts of little bits and bobs. Quite a useful one to know. Now, the issue with these is they are designed to sit inside the channel. So you see there's a little lip here. That is kind of meant to sit inside. And sitting inside is good because it means gravity is kind of holding it in as it goes down. I, ca I can, I think, what I'm probably going to do, we're going to bodge it properly and just do it. Oh, oh, look at that. There's a little, there's a tiny little screw in the way. Look at that horrible little thing. And then I'm just gonna hope the glue holds. I'm gonna shove it on the bottom <laughs> and just hope the glue holds. I've done it on the other one and <laughs> don't give up the day job, JV. Look at that. <laughs> it could do with maybe a little bit more, but I've basically just gone sod it and stuck as much glue as I can possibly get to fill those gaps either side. It's pretty strong glue, so I'm hoping that will do. And then I'm gonna probably just put a bit of hose pipe inside. It is an absolutely gorgeous day today, but <laughs> it's the first time I've been properly cold, like I'm absolutely freezing. And I found a tiny, tiny little flathead screwdriver. I don't have a drill or anything. This is just seized. This is like that kind of old greenhouse seizing that I know and hate so well. No. That is not going to budge, so I think I might just have to work, work around this. This is, a, this is actually from a Christmas cracker. <laughs> One of those tiny, tiny little screwdrivers. Oh, it's nearly... <sighs> that sun is so low. It's about two o'clock. The season changes so quickly, doesn't it? This is the stupidest bloody thing. So I don't have a screw, but <laughs> I do have this uh, step drill bit for drilling holes, uh, kind of circular holes in things. And I can manually just about poke it through this. And I think I'll be able to create a hole <laughs> that the screw can slot into and then we can glue around it. Oh, look at this magic. Where there's a will, there's a way, eh? Eh? Look at that. Perfect, maybe. <laughs> Does it actually line up? <laughs> oh, you know, that's not bad. Oh, absolute magic. That'll work, that'll work. Yes. Just gotta hold it in place for quite a while while it does its initial set. I think it says about five minutes. And I was just checking the label. This is the same stuff that we bought for all our skating boards. So I'm just using the very last of the tube. And <laughs> just realized <laughs> This one's the indoor use only. <laughs> so there's a pretty good chance that after the first rain, this might all just dissolve. We've got two tubes at home. One is the outdoor use, because we had lots of bits to do out there as well. And uh, yeah, I picked up the indoor use one. So going really well today, going really well. <laughs> oh dear me. Oh, it's holding. It's holding though, that's good. Look at that complete and utter mess. Will it set before the next rain shower? Will the next rain shower completely dissolve the glue and make this all completely worthless anyway? I don't know, but we have fun finding out, don't we? <laughs> so I've just got them both in and I thought, oh, I'll, I'll uh, put the... 
what do you call it? The cold, my brain. Uh, hose pipe. I'll glue the hose pipe in, and then realise if I wiggle that, it's going to come unstuck. So, I'm going to leave them for a bit. Hopefully, they will set, and I can do the the glue before I leave today because Jess needs that glue gun back. And she was like, "You better bloody bring it back to the allotment." She was going to use it earlier. She was like, "Ah, you've got another tool at the allotment," uh, which is fair. It's very annoying, isn't it? Now. Two choices, I think, for what to do next. I need to do something to warm up. Oh, I should really do that auto vent. But that's a fiddly cold job. Although it is in the greenhouse, maybe I should do. Oh. All right, let me do that first. Let me do that first. I've actually got lots of experience setting these up now. And uh, can I remember how you take this out? No, absolutely not. Oh God, it's cramped in here. Oh, look at the peppers though. Oh, look at the colors. Oh, it's so good. In the depths of November now, it's so cold coming in here. But it's gonna be a bit warmer once I've got this fixed. Something actually went right. It's as simple as, oh. Oh, okay, well, it nearly went right. Okay, well, that's fine. That's a job for next year. It was as simple as oh, got out, uh, removing the pin and unscrewing it. Now, I don't actually, I've just lost the pin. That's why you heard me go, oh, I put it down and immediately lost it. Now, I lost it last year as well and just used a, a cut piece of wire to, to hold it in there. So this can go back home and Hopefully it'll be okay next year. I'm not sure if it's, it might need replacing. It might be that it was stuck open because it stopped working or it might just be the extreme temperature drop. I'm not sure. We'll take it home and see how it does next year. They are disposable, but they're meant to last kind of three to five years. I think I've only had this for one or two seasons. So maybe it is done, maybe it is done. It says 2020 on it actually. Hmm. Just before I got distracted, I was thinking two jobs either Clear out the tomatoes, very gross. God, let me show you them quick. I've just seen them from outside today, but oh my God. Whoa, okay. Sun gold are falling everywhere. Oh, it is nice and warm in here though. But oh my God, the smell. Yeah, that's not good. Wow, the mold. This black strawberry plant. That's gotta be blight, hasn't it? That's gotta be blight or something, some kind of infection. How's our bearded tomato doing? Still there, still gross. So I could do this, or I could do this little no man's land. And in fact, I'm definitely gonna sort this little no man's land because it's not raining and it's always bloody raining at the moment. So if I've got a job in the tunnel or in a greenhouse, I save that until it's raining. And uh, I had a bit of fun actually with this little bit, trying to remember exactly how big it was because I was trying to plot it on that veg plotter site that I was telling you about. I've got a discount code for that in the description and there's some details on the screen now, but I was basically doing it all from a bit of memory and Google Maps, like the satellite imagery of Google Maps, you can use the measure feature to get a good size for sort of setting out all your beds and that kind of thing. But I just could not remember how big that was. And it's always been a bit of a funny area this little bit between the greenhouses. The plan was to use it for potatoes and things in tubs and, and that kind of thing, but it just doesn't quite work. Partly because of this, I've got my water butt at the front here and I do think I would rather have them both at the back and then I can actually have access to this area at the front. It will make it slightly harder to water. I'm not completely sure what I'm gonna do with this. The, uh, the idea is to redo that greenhouse at some point and the base and it, get it sloping backwards for the water. But for now, what I do want to do is just get in here, give it a bit of a tidy up and basically kind of do a bit of leveling slabs, membrane, that kind of thing. But first, I've got to get it all out so I can have a look and a bit of a think. And that is going to warm me up, I'm sure. Now, to be honest, I've I've done the exact same thing that I did in the last video where I was clearing up, where I've started something and gone, oh, why have I done this? This is really stupid. But this is one of those bits of the allotment that's been really bugging me for a really long time and that I felt like I needed to sort out. And uh, I really only wanted to get this corner sorted so that I could have the nice, the water butt kind of nicely connected in and nice and level so the water butt's not all wonky. You're not worried about it falling into the greenhouse and that kind of thing. But you know, the area around it, I feel like I should sort out at the same time. It just kind of makes sense. But it's one of those things where I've just moved a load of stuff and now where do I put that? A lot of that stuff needs to go in the shed. And 
it's one of those kind of, you know, it knocks on, knocks one job, knocks on to another because the shed, the shed is just shocking. It needs a complete like rebuild. You know, if you've never seen this before, because <laughs> I don't show it very often, it's just like, it's, I can't believe it survived the storm, to be honest. And it is full of stuff. Very, very wet stuff, I might add, because this is all just rotting wood. And I think a lot of this, I might move into the tunnel, especially for winter. It kind of comes into the greenhouses and out as and when necessary. But I think I might do that now. And then there's a load of space in here for a lot of the bits that I'm clearing up. Oh, what am I bringing with me? I am so, so, so incredibly jealous of people who have proper actual sheds, like sheds you can go in and enjoy. Mine is so bleak and depressing. At least that one was always like that. It's not, it's not my fault that it is quite so grim. Although I could have improved it at some point. There's a couple of people on YouTube with sheds. I have such shed envy. There's um, one who's uh, a really young lad. He's only 12 years old, Freddy's allotment. I did a little community post about him the other day because he's just hit a thousand subscribers, which is amazing. Really, really pleased for him. But he can go, he's got his, it's only a little shed, but he can go in there and make a cup of tea. <laughs> just, he's so organized as well. I think I've seen some of his videos recently and that might be why I've got a bit of an organizing itch and Jane from Jane's Growing Garden as well. Ah, oh, her shed project, amazing. So I really do, that's, that's big on the to-do list, but it's one of those things, isn't it? You'll get around to it one day, maybe. Let's get this in the tunnel. <sighs> this time of year is very difficult, isn't it? There is just not enough time. Um, I'm trying to figure out exactly what I'm doing and I don't know, I don't know. I've just realized that actually, I've been moving a load of stuff into the tunnel and what would have probably been a much better, more sensible idea to get the greenhouse cleared and then use that as your temporary kind of storage for, for winter. Basically, I need loads of storage because it's a little bit up in the air. I don't know, am I gonna be working on the shed? In which case I'm gonna need everything out of the shed to, to do a rebuild. Or is the next big thing a load of work in the tunnel, digging it all over, getting one half kind of dug and a nice bed and the other half ready and covered. <laughs> And so I've just moved a load of stuff in the tunnel and actually if it's chucking it down, that's, that might be one of the next jobs I do. So I might change my mind again, start ripping out everything in there. I think that might make sense, you know. Second lot full up and it's looking so much clearer in there. There is some properly disgusting sights. How grim is that? <laughs> I feel like really I'm at that, that slightly funny stage of the winter clear up where there's, there's a lot of stages to it, you know, and um, I'm sort of planning and figuring it out as I go along. And it's all a bit new with the tunnel and the kind of big projects that I've, oh, I was hoping to get done over winter, but really, if I was going to rebuild that shed or something, I feel like I should have started quite a few weeks ago, and there's loads and loads of other stuff to do. So, um, yeah, I don't know. We're going to play this winter by ear, I think. We're going to keep plugging away, see what I can do. But for now, I'm going to finish this off. But before we lose the light, I'm going to say goodbye and an extra special thank you to my Chili Pepper Tip patrons, Tony, Bill, Pam, Louise, Mel, Michael, Denise, Socks in the Garden, and Andrew. Thank you ever so much for joining me today, folks, and hopefully I'll see you again very soon.